Hey everybody, I hope you're having a great afternoon, morning, evening, whatever time you're watching this. You know, I've seen online recently a lot of people talking about Manly P. Hall. And to some people, he's very new, even though his works are very old. And the teachings are very old. There's nothing new under the sun. Um, to some people who are just now learning about Manly P. Hall, let's share a few different things, shall we? So Manly P. Hall was a member of the Rosicrucian Fellowship. And he published the Lost Keys of Freemasonry in March of 1923. He didn't join the lodge and become a Freemason till like 30 years later, though, in 1954, when he published that, after he published that book. Um, so that was interesting. That, that's interesting. And the H.S. Crocker Company of San Francisco had agreed to publish the book if Hall could secure the interest of the book designer John Henry Nash, who once worked as the printer at the Vatican. So Manly P. Hall, one of the things he had written with his um, principles was the 10 basic principles for better living. Number one, stop worrying. Number two, do not try to dominate and control other people. Number three, learn to relax. Number four, cultivate a sense of humor. Number five, five, <laughs> rein in your ambition. Six, don't accumulate more than you need. Seven, believe in something bigger than yourself. Eight, never intentionally harm anyone. Nine, beware of anger. Ten, don't ever blame others for your own personal mistakes. Those are good teachings. Here's some other stuff about Manly P. Hall. Manly was known to have been either gay or bisexual, and he was married twice, but neither marriage was ever consummated. His wives um, and disciples turned a blind eye to his indiscretions, basically, and uh, things he liked, and um, they would put a stop to any scandal that would take place before it hit the, the public, except for one, except for this last one. Let's read about it. In 1988, when Hall had become morbidly obese, almost unable to walk, and showed signs of dementia, he fell in with the salesman turned psychic named Daniel Fritz, who claimed to be a reincarnation of the prince from ancient Atlantis, and his son David, who regularly took spirit journeys to Jupiter. No different than the hundreds of other psychics, astrologers, occultists, and incarnated princes that Hall had entertained over the years. But his disciples suspected that these two were con artists. In August of 1990, Hall rewrote his will to give Daniel his entire estate worth some $52 million. Six days later, he was dead. Daniel and David were alone with the body for several hours. Disciple believed that these two may have been involved in his murder. An inquest was found, and excuse me, an inquest found no evidence of foul play, but the will was contested and estate reverted back to Hall's widow. Um, Daniel and David moved on to other clients. Now, he had over 243 manuscripts and over 200 rare books covering an expensive overview of the occult um, from, from its golden age in the 16th and 17th centuries through the years of enlightenment and revolution and into the modern period and includes such notable item as a collection of 30 manuscripts bound in one volume, 
reputed to have come from the library of Count Caglistiero, C-A-G-L-I-O-S-T-R-O, Caglistro. I'm sorry, my pronunciation isn't, don't, 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 don't get me on the technicalities of the, how to say it, you guys, okay? Um, wow, I lost my place. Where was I? See, that's what I get. Um, the, it says two regular Masonic manuscripts, an early 17th century illuminated Napolitan manuscript charting the search of the, the Philosopher's Stone, among many others. The manuscripts are especially re unique given that each one is written and illustrated by hand. Um, many... <laughs> unattributed with little provenance added to the collection's overall mystery. Now, I got this from several sources, which I'll put in the notes. Um, so that's just kind of an interesting overview that I thought I'd share. 